Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Such a great day to be here. I love Wednesdays. You know, it's the middle of the week, yes. You know that you're more than halfway, especially by the time we get to here, and that the week's just kind of winding down. And this week's weird because we move into Thanksgiving here in the United States, so I feel like we're almost into holiday mode. I know it's more than a week away, but it's funny how your mind just starts switching there as you think about pie and all the good stuff. But uh, welcome, Flower School Live. Today we're talking about Flower School, common questions, things that come up, both for graduates and current students. And then also if you're thinking about it, just some things that maybe have been brought up. And it's great because periodically we'll do something within class and then somebody asks a question and it turns out that everybody was thinking that but nobody had ever asked. So that's what we're going to do live today. If you have a question in your mind, get on there, type it in, make sure you put it. We have Caledonia on Facebook and Susie on YouTube, so they'll try to answer and give you links to things and keep you up to date, and I'm sure they're busy greeting you right now. Then in the studio, we have Parker and Marisa, so they'll be watching YouTube and Facebook and verbalizing your questions to me. If you haven't introduced yourself to all your people, do so. Put your tulip in there if you're part of the tulip people and let them know where you're from. And then we're gonna get started designing. I decided my unifying factor today. You know, every time I start to do a live and figure out my arrangements, I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? And Maurice always grabs me flowers out and sets it up, but I'm still like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And I don't know why, but for some reason, the curly willow was just speaking to me today. Uh, it's a red variety, it's called Scarlet Willow. It does grow really well right here in the Pacific Northwest. In fact, you have to be careful because its roots are very invasive. It grows so well, so you have to be careful where you plant it. But Scarlet Willow is this more um, almost rusty orange hue and gives a wonderful autumn look to the design. So you can see I put a whole bunch out. Then, once I had the willow as my unifying factor, I thought, what containers? What am I going to do? And again, nothing was speaking to me. And then all of a sudden, I remembered this vase that I have. And I thought, you know what? We're going to start with color. And then I just went to the shelves. This one I brought over from my house. This one and this one were on the shelves. And they're just vases that I've collected over the years or have been gifted. And it's that time. So we'll get started here. And you guys speak up, let me know if you've got questions, and we'll be talking about flower school. This particular one is a contemporary vase that I purchased at our local wholesaler. I uh, have no idea who made it. Oh, yes I do. It's UCI, so UCI is the manufacturer distributor. And it's a contemporary one that you could probably find still at your wholesale house. I filled it with floral foam, that's been pre-soaked with flower food, taped it down, and then I can start designing. Now when I tape down like this, one of the first things that I do is to seal my tape, just because there's no reason to leave that for later that you might accidentally leave it showing. So taking a moment with a Gaelic sleeve on each side, and the whole purpose there is just to conceal my mechanics. That's all I'm doing. I want to make sure that that tape doesn't show later. Then I look at my willow and I start determining what's going to be the best way to prune this down because it's kind of big to use in its entirety. So maybe I'll cut it down first so that I've got smaller bits. And then I look at the stems themselves and I think about how best to utilize them. And sometimes it's beneficial to just prune it out a little bit so that you've got sleeker lines. I like that piece. This is a nice one too, but it's going in a lot of different directions. So I'm kind of thinking about what's gonna be the best way to utilize this 
to make it all work together. And I think if I just prune out this smaller piece, there we go. That way we can all enjoy the lines that these makes. Then I have the bigger pieces. I might use them in something else. But for now, I know that I'm starting with this and just going to go ahead and place it in. I love that curved bit there where it comes up and over and back in. This one comes up and over, giving it a cut and then setting that down in there. So what I'm doing is basically framing. I'm going to turn this one that way. Framing my focal emphasis area. Just adding branches in, getting lines going, kind of pulling it up and over, leaving the focal area open. Then I could come back and tie it in or leave it. Kind of thinking here how I might want to Ooh, I kind of like the way this comes back in there. So I'm going to just tie this, lash it in place, get a little bit of curvature going on there, just a little bit of bind wire. Leanne, is there, oh, excuse me, uh, I have a question from Nikki that possibly the Tulip people could answer for her or you as well. Nikki's wanting to know the best sources for vases and containers. Ha! Excellent question, Nikki, because that was one of the things that I was going to talk about. So let's just kind of throw it in here now. Because vases and containers, people are starting to find that they're struggling to find great things. Ooh, wire in my coffee. Not good. We'll get that out of there. Um, they're struggling to find cool containers because of this whole supply chain disruption that's going on. And it's getting a little bit tricky. But we have several tulips that have taken advantage of being creative, innovative people, and they've reached out. And this is something I would advise to each and every single one of you. Let people know that you're looking for vessels. Just speak up. I know that we have two tulips who posted Look around your cupboards, look in your closets. If you've got old bases that you just need to get rid of, I'll take them. People love to clear out their house and get rid of what they consider to be junk, but for you, it can become such a treasure. It's a de desired thing. So Carl did that, Drake did that, and I do that. I always tell people, you know what? I love any bases that you have. This one was gifted to me by a friend just recently. This one was gifted to me by my mother-in-law. This one I purchased. But I have so many vessels that have been gifted that for the person, they aren't really in need. They don't want them anymore. They're in the way. But for you, it can be the greatest thing ever. So first off, go ahead and tell people you want vessels. Secondly, then start looking at alternative places. It's not just floral wholesalers. Look at home goods stores. Look at the Goodwill. Look at all the odd little stores and you'll be surprised what you can find. There's a lot of vases to be had. It's just opening your eyes and thinking a little differently so that you're not going to the tried and true that you've always bought it at the same spot because always buying it at the same spot may not work these days. That's one thing we're finding. So key is, let people know you want the vases because they may be happy to clear out their stock and get rid of it so that they have empty shelves and empty closets and empty cupboards and you win on that. So that's the first step I would definitely say. Now if you're a storefront, you could even offer everybody, you know what, for every vase you bring me I'll give you a flower. If they're giving you their garbage and you're giving them a flower, how cool is that? They bring you 50 vases, they get 50 flowers. But how would you get 50 vases for the price of 50 flowers? Everybody wins. So think of it just offering a trade in there. Um, you can even tell customers, guys, we will repurpose your vessels, bring them in, we'll add flowers and give them back to you. Then you don't have to buy more vases. Everybody wins again, that whole recycle, reuse, repurpose, very eco-minded. I know a lot of our students, when they're working on their projects, 
they're on the hunt for vessels and they're surprised how many times they just go to their house and they have everything they need. They just forgot they even had it because it gets shoved into a closet or a cupboard and it's just a matter of thinking, oh, gee, I probably have a vase that would work for that. And then all of a sudden it becomes a treasure and it works out so great. Leanne, it sounds like that's what Lori does over at their shop. They do the same thing, a flower for every vase. Oh, do they? I love it. Good job, Lori. Yeah. And I think people like to be part of your business. They like to feel like they're participating and helping you. So it really makes it a win-win situation for everybody. And with the transition of seasons, I brought in um, some evergreen. This is uh, Eastern Red Cedar. Some people call it um, Virginia Cypress, or excuse me, Virginia Juniper, because it is in the Juniper family, but it's also known as Eastern Red Cedar. So it's always kind of confusing. Like, is it Cedar, is it Juniper? But they're all related. And um, so I had to laugh because in the Tulip Tuesday that we just sent out, I was showing how to use a stripper to clean it so it protected your hands. And then today I was doing some filming and all of a sudden I had pitch all over my hands again. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so early in the year to already be pitchy. And I was cleaning up before the live because I didn't want to get pitch all over everything. And I got to thinking, you know, that's a Tulip Tuesday I should do, but I'll throw it in right now. When you get that stuff all over your hands, you're all pitchy and such, your go-to, Goo Gone. And I knew Gretchen had reached out and said, how do I get this off? Goo Gone is your friend. Now, if you don't happen to have Goo Gone, you'd be surprised. Even taking butter and rubbing that into your hands will help take it off because that oily base just sort of removes it. But Goo Gone does it the best, in my opinion, and that's what I use most of the time. And it allows me to get that pitch off my hands before I go live so that I'm not getting pitch all over everything. But I just had to laugh because I was like, oh my gosh, it is that time already. And I'm not quite ready for that. Although I will say I am ready for evergreens and such. I love, 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 love designing with evergreens. I hate, 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 hate having pitch all over my hands, but it's the necessary evil. So. You know, uh, Leanne, uh, Teacher Carolyn is on Facebook, and I, I swear at one point she said hand sanitizer works well for that. Can she verify? I, there was, I remember there was something with hand sanitizer. Someone you just knew? said olive oil over here as well. Olive, olive oil, oil would work, yes. Olive oil would definitely work. Olive and oil? You know, I think that Carolyn did say that. So, Teacher Carolyn, if you could chime in, was it hand sanitizer that worked? Because we all know we have lots of hand sanitizer in our life, and so if that does help, that would be great. Definitely. And uh, Leanne, I wanted to do a shout out to Kathleen, and also if everyone out there can tap their hearts. Um, it looks like um, she's up from Washington and her uh, flower shop flooded, so she had to step away for a moment and just happy to watch something showful. So if we can just give Kathleen some love. You know, if, if you didn't know it, here in the Pacific Northwest, we've been having torrential downpours and flooding and homes and businesses, and, and it has been pretty dreadful. So... Um, Let's do, share out some love. Let them know that you're thinking about them. And, you know, just put in a heart, you know, click the thumbs up if you're on YouTube, but let them know that you're aware and that you love them because we all need a little bit of beauty in our life. And when you get those storms that bring in the tragedies of flooding and such, it's hard to keep your spirits up. You know, that's why I actually did put my Christmas trees, although I'm just going to call them holiday trees. Actually, sort of just calling them winter trees because I didn't put any ornaments on them. I just have lit trees in the house and trees as in plural, um, as in five of them. In my little tiny one-room condo, I have five lit trees now, but they're skinny trees, you know, so it doesn't count, right? Um, but I needed light in my life because it does get sort of depressing when it gets darker and the days are shorter. I know um, 
Maurice and I went out to dinner the other night, and both of us, I mean, we went home and we went to bed. It was like, this is really, dis, you know, stupid. It's stupid. That's all I can say. It's stupid to feel that tired. Um, but it's the weather that does it to you. So flowers help. And knowing how to design helps. So coming to flower school, if you are getting those um, newsletters where you got like the Tulip Tuesday tip, then you know how to handle the evergreens. Now you know that the Gugon will take that off your hands and I'll probably film that because that's a very timely tip as well. We'll get that out there. But if you don't get it, all you have to do is request to be in our newsletter. And then when you're on that list, you'll get an email on Monday that is an inspirational design email. And then you'll get an email on Tuesday, which is a professional tip to make your designing life easier. And then you'll get a reminder about what's happening live on Wednesday. And Thursday, we do inspirational quotes just to inspire you to be a better person, a better floral artist. And then on Friday, we share out playlists and such, and sometimes we do the slideshows. But almost every day, not every single day, but almost every day, you'll get an email from us with what's new, what's going on, and what to be expected. It's a great way to stay in contact with all the tulips. So if you haven't signed up for the brochure or the newsletter, uh, Caledonia, Susie, if you could put that link in there, that way everybody can just click it and get there easy. That makes it nice. So question for the tulips. Those of you that have done a basic floral design should be able to answer this because we teach it on maybe day two of the basic floral design class. What is my color harmony here? I actually planned this out ahead of time. I was intentional so that I had the flowers to do the color harmony I want. And Parker, do you have an answer? Well, I was going to say, while people think about that, Carolyn chimed in and confirmed hand sanitizer does work. She said, also, Crisco and Leaf Shine. Okay, so thanks, Carolyn. Hand sanitizer works, Crisco, Leaf Shine. So if anyone knows how Baby to get oil, <laughs> olive oil, Goo Gone, and butter. So there we go, seven ways to get pitch off your hands. I love it. Okay, so think about that. What is my color harmony? Put it in there, type it in, and we'll come back to that. And Leanne, um, Roxy actually validated our conversation the other day, but reason being we went to bed so early and having a little bit of midnight snacks, she says we're in the hibernating season. That's what we decided that we were hibernating and because we're also eating so much. I mean, I gosh, I had lasagna. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> it was the best lasagna. And I thought, oh, I'll save half for lunch. I didn't save a bite. I scarfed that whole thing down. And then I ate cake too. I was like, I can't believe I did that. But oh well, you know, it's there are worse things and that's just the way it was, so. Um, more curly willow. I told you I was using curly willow and everything. This piece I thought was kind of great because of the way it went out horizontally. And I was going to use my Fiesta Wear picture from my mother-in-law because I thought that would be very cool. Mm. And it's got such great movement just instantly. So that's where I started. It's a little longer than I need, so I'm going to cut this down. And then... I had another piece that had a bit of horizontal movement to it, so I thought I'd squeeze that in there and line it up so that they all fit together and cut that down. And then, I don't want this piece just wigging out up there, so I pull it back in because I don't want to lose that horizontal movement. I want to keep that going. That's kind of where I started and I don't want to miss out on that. So I just pull that piece down and I could pull in a little bit more right around the neck just to get some more fullness there. Pulling that in there. 
Leanne, I have an answer on your color harmony. Okay, what did we get? Okay, so we have uh, Sheree, Deborah, Lucy, Kim, Kathy, Chu, and Nikki, who all said complimentary. However, I think John gets the prize because he said complimentary analogous. Ooh, interesting because I was neither of those. Oh. I have a split compliment. That was where I was. Okay, ding, 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 ding. Split compliment. Complimentary was closest because yellow and violet is compliment. But I did yellow. And I don't know if you can see it well enough, but red violet and blue violet, which gives you the split compliments. So it sounds like YouTube wins on that one. Go YouTube! Yay, YouTube! Woohoo, YouTube! Um, so that was where I was heading with that, was the split compliment. Seeing it on camera, it's harder to tell. So complimentary part. would be the backup to that. But split compliment was what I was expecting and what I had purposely picked with the red violet, blue violet, and yellow. So, and flowers that I used there, because I talked about um, the eastern red cedar, but then it was Crispedia, Billy Balls, Lysianthus, Scaviosa, and Oringium. So practicing your vocabulary, learning all your flowers is a very important part of being a professional florist is getting that knowledge down. And I know I still run into things sometimes I go, oh my gosh, what is that? I don't know what that is. I'll go, Marisa, do you know? Michelle, Carolyn, can you tell me what the name of this is? Um, I had to ask it today with the Integra Folia because I totally forgot it. I knew I'd used it before, but I couldn't think of the name. And so I'm running around, you know what this is? You know, I have an app on my phone, but it's easier to turn to whoever you're working with and say, do you know, instead of getting out the app. But Who threw away the labels? Pardon? I said, and say, who threw away the labels? Where's the shipping slip? I know, <laughs> but, but you know, yeah, the, the, so many times, and you probably know this too, so many times you buy something at your wholesale house and you get home with the invoice and it says miscellaneous foliage. And you're like, oh, I can't sell this as miscellaneous foliage. And so we're scrambling around trying to figure out what is it, what is it? And it's like, oh my gosh. Very fun, but. So Leanne, while you're picking your materials, shout out to some tulips out here in Facebook land. We have John Cherie, Marjorie Roxy, Drake, Jim, David Thu, Scott, Arthur, Edelie, Carl, Rosie, Wayne, Lisa, Kim, Lori, Deborah, Debbie, Robin, Annalise, Cindy, Jessica, Donna, Janet, Casey. And we also have Bethany, who has been a tulip member for one year and is the first time joining us live, oh. as well as Ace catching a live from Alabama. Wonderful. Well, welcome to you all. I recognize so many of those names from live and from the Tulip People group. Um, some of you are on the Facebook private group, and I just really appreciate your activity on there because you're um, so supportive and helpful to each other. I, I see people post, does anybody know blah, 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 blah. And then quickly somebody from the Tulip people will come on and say, well, if you do this, or if you try that, or have you considered, or well, there's a video on it here. And you all help each other so much. And I really, really, really appreciate that because there's so many of us that Marisa and Carolyn and Michelle and myself and Parker and Anna and Jerry and Shell. I mean, we can't keep up with all of it. There's not enough of us. There's more of you than there is of us. And so having the Tulip people help us really, really, really is fabulous. So now, if you're not a member of the Tulip people, it is a private group on Facebook and you have to ask through Facebook. So when you look in groups, look up Tulip people. It has the red tulip. That'll be your clue that you found the right spot. And just request to be admitted. You need to answer three questions, um, like basically, how are you a tulip? 
Uh, are you a graduate? Are you a member of the Flower Lovers Club? Are you a current student? Because that's how they determine whether you are part of that private group or not, because you have to be either a Flower Lovers Club member a current student or a graduate to qualify to be in there. Um, so be sure and answer the questions, that way they know to put you in. And then once you're in, that's where we release the pictures first. So like the, the pro photos that we do of all the arrangements that we do during the live, we post them first there on Thursday. And then we start rationing them out to the rest of social media channels on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And by Sunday, they'll be on Pinterest and they'll be on YouTube. They'll be everywhere. But we get started with the people in the tulip people so um, in fact Caledonia Susie put that link in there because maybe people are going to want to join that I can't remember what flowers I wanted to put in this one so I'm kind of thinking here hmm can I do a quick shout out you can uh sorry if I mispronounced your name but Licia Pastor CFD <gasps> Licia Licia yeah yay congratulations yay. Licia you know I get questions so how do I know um what do I do? How do I become a florist? What are the steps and what do I need to... Um, what do you think, Marisa? Does that go in there? I like it. I think it goes in there. It's okay. perfect. I think so too. So we're going to do that. It's got a wire on it, so I'm going to cut it down with that. Um, so like Licia just became CFD, so now she is Licia CFD FDI, so she's got both credentials, so it's international dual certification. Uh, the way that the classes work, you complete your basic course, you get your certificate, and then you are eligible to do your advanced course and get that certificate. The two together, when you have completed basic and advanced, you earn the title FDI certified floral designer. So you get the right to put the credentials FDI after your name. And that gives you the golden lapel pin, the third certificate, which is the certified floral designer, and then qualifies you to test with the American Institute of Floral Designers and get your CFD credential, um, which is true validation professionally that you have done the work that you've invested in yourself, that you've invested in your career, and that you qualify to be considered to be a true professional trained floral designer. It's a big deal. It's very exciting. A little bit of green trick dianthus. I'm using it as an alternative to foliage, so it's almost like I'm mossing my container, but I'm actually using green trick dianthus, and everything's just weaving into the armature that I created using the curly willow. And then getting my ranunculus down in there and just spreading it out. Now, what's my color harmony? Oh my gosh, this one's kind of trickier yet. So I'm still fussing. You guys come up with what you think the color harmony is and go. What do you think? I'm going to put in a little bit of hypericum. It's funny because in the classes, we concentrate on color because we want to make sure that you've got the knowledge and the skills to create the proper harmonies. And then we focus on the elements and principles so that you can do your line, your emphasis, bring in the rhythm and contrast and unity and all those important things. And it just allows you to truly understand how to professionally use your medium. So it works out really well. Any answers out there on our color harmony? I am monochromatic. Checking here. Okay, it looks like, so you have monochromatic on your end. So it looks like uh, Sh uh, Cherie said split complementary. Kathy said monochromatic. I have an analogous. I was going for monochromatic, so if you started in the monochromatic mode, um, that's where you are correct. Now, the, the discrepancy here, and something you want to think about, I'm going to grab a color wheel so that we can talk about it. 
Monochromatic, I was basically working with oranges, light, dark, you know, from a pastel orange to a more true corally orange and then a definite intense orange. And so that would be monochromatic. Analogous would take it over to the green. And you could say this is more pinker. So then it would be sort of red, orange to green. So that could be analogous. But in floral design, oftentimes we ignore the green because it's a backdrop. It's just like the trees in the woods and you focus on the flower color. And if you focus on the flower color, it definitely would be more in the monochromatic mode. So there's a little bit of gray area there, but I would definitely say monochromatic on that one myself. I'm gonna turn it here and see what I've got going on and bring in a little bit more excitement somehow, somewhere. Now Leanne, speaking of color, Lacey is a red-green colorblind. Is it still possible to be a successful floral designer? Yes. It's trickier because all of a sudden you have to potentially have somebody pick your materials so that you've got a color palette that works. Um, but you'll be able to do texture, you'll be able to do line and focal emphasis. The only element you won't be able to do easily is color. There is um, an amazing floral artist, internationally known, you may be familiar with him. His name is Pim Vandenacker. He is from Delft. He is 100% colorblind, but that's never stopped him. He's brilliant, absolutely amazingly brilliant. Um, he's written a book, he's taught classes, he does all kinds of things, and he hasn't let color stop him. So, um, yes, you can. Is it perfectly fine? No, it's going to be a challenge, but you can do that. I know you can do it. Um, and it's kind of interesting, you learn to compensate differently because you learn things by texture, you learn things by the form, and it works. So yes, you can. We had one student who was actually legally blind, and so had to be down like this to be able to work, but she became an amazing florist, and she was probably one of the finest florists in handwork because she could bring it right up to her eyes and see it and do it and it was impeccable and you know so yeah you can do that so i'm going to turn this so you can see it from the other side i created a horizontal line coming through with the gray just a little bit to make it more interesting and then keeping everything pretty much all together i've got another ranunculus so i'm going to put in here to draw your eye more towards the back because I'm leaning some to the front here. So if I add in another one, it just kind of pulls your eye back, adding depth to the design. So it's not quite so one-sided. Now tomorrow, um, Maurice will style these, Parker will shoot them, and we'll get them posted in the Tulip People private group tomorrow so that you guys just see them first. And then Friday, I'll start putting them out on social. You can find it on Pinterest. Um, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you follow us, you'll be able to find it. So I'll set that one aside. We've got yet another. I wanted to do three today, and I think I'm going to make it. So I have monochromatic, and I have a split complement. And you can see how using things a little differently. So I grouped my materials so if you're in basic flow design when we get into contemporary work in that third week or if you're online in that third segment we talk about grouping having multiple binding points using materials so that they aren't just salt and pepper throughout uh, in the basic course we do a horizontal arrangement so that you work with the line going horizontally rather than vertically. So all of these things, it's just a little different interpretation. Now, when it comes to the vessels, when you're doing your work from home, you can use any container you want. You don't have to go out and buy something. If you're creating a round arrangement, you could use a soup bowl. 
It'd be great to work with. If you're creating a centerpiece, you could use a gravy boat. So go through your kitchen. You'd be amazed at how much you can do with what you already have. And for us as teachers, we absolutely adore seeing what you create, what containers you choose to use, and how you pull it all together. So um, don't let material stop you when it comes to your floral studies. Know that you can adapt and use what is available to you and create a way. You don't have to worry about it. And then people say, oh, well, what if I don't have the right camera? If you've got a camera phone, that'll work. You can get pictures of your work. We'll tell you, you know, take one from the top down, make sure you take one at the bottom, let us see this. But we tell you right in the directions what we need to see and we'll help you get going with your photography so that you can just use your camera from your phone and it works out just perfect. So, Parker or Marisa, any questions out there while I grab their materials again? Uh, I have a question from Emily over here on Facebook. She's wanting to know how to bring into good business practices such as charity, sustainability, and good ethics in the floral industry specifically. That's so important. That's a great question. How do you walk the walk and live true to yourself and also make a living as a florist? And it's making a conscious decision about everything you do. One thing that we talked about at the very beginning, putting a call out for vase donations so that you can reuse, repurpose, recycle. It's a very good eco choice. Today, I did the one with foam. I did one with an armature. I'm going to do another one with an armature. It could be looking at how do I minimize my use of foam so that I have a few more eco-conscious choices. So creating using armatures. Willow makes a great armature. It's so perfect. You just kind of wind it around, tuck it down in, weave it. You're getting a lot of love for that vase, Leanne. This vase is brand new to me. It was gifted to me just last week. Um, it does not have a label on it, so I can't tell you where it was manufactured. It is vintage, it is older, it's very heavy pottery, and it's stunning. And what is interesting, um, in my living room I have this painting of a poppy, and it's kind of the oranges and yellows, and I have this really big yellow pot there. It's an olive ceramic, an olive jar. And I've always thought, oh, that works so perfect, that yellow with the orange poppy, blah, blah, blah. And then I got this. I'm like, what am I going to do with that? It doesn't go with my yellow and orange. What am I going to do? And I set it beside it, and I never even registered. But the poppy, the background of the painting, is this color. And so it's like it was made to sit by my poppy painting. It's like that's where it's going to live for the rest of its life because it's perfect there. Uh, but it is kind of interesting. It's a great vessel. So thank you to Tom for this one because he gifted it and I treasure it very much. And I'm just weaving the willow in so that I get a natural armature going because I really didn't want to put floral netting in here. Um, floral netting, even if you use the coated, sometimes it rusts a little bit and leaves stains on the inside and I didn't want that. I wanted to keep this clean and, and pretty. Um, so I thought, well, then using natural mechanics with the willow would solve that and give me the ability to control without um, possibly damaging the interior of the vessel. I wanted to keep that. Then, I did scavenge from my house. I had um, the bittersweet in my house for the autumn season, and it's dried, it totally dead, and it was starting to shed, and it was getting messy, and I was just tired of it, and I thought, Whoa! it sort of goes in this vase. And so I brought it from the house, because if you've turned to 
winter trees, you don't need the autumn bittersweet anymore. So I took out the autumn bittersweet and thought, well, you know what? It just has to go to Flower School Live. And so I bound it together so that it stays and I'm just going to weave it down in so that I can get it in here. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any advice for someone who might be, uh, you know, a florist who's not getting a lot of answers back on job applications right now? Ah, so they're looking for work and they're not getting responses? Is that the question? Yeah. Florists are notoriously bad human resources people. We get so busy and we know we need help but we don't take the time to interview and follow up with you and we get so we just whine we're like oh i can't find any help there's nobody to hire but it's like well you have these resumes sitting on your desk but you're not responding to them so my advice to you if you're looking for work is don't give up go back it can take three times of applying at the exact same spot to convince them that they need to hire you. And it's not because they don't want to hire you, it's because they're so busy that they don't have the time to talk to you, to interview you, and they need you. They need you badly, but they're so overwhelmed that they don't even take the time to get you. So if you are finding that it's really difficult to get employment, time to change your approach and instead of just throwing it out there and waiting being very aggressive and going in and saying hey i really want to work for you i want to work for you i am an fdi certified floral designer i have my training i understand what you need leanne will vouch for me and just keep doing that and i know when we teach you in the basic course we say plan on it taking three times don't plan on just walking in and getting a job instantly plan on having to show them that they need you and forcing them to pay attention to you and it's now it's even more so because with the holidays they need you desperately there's i get calls constantly in fact our job list is huge and and I don't even worry about it anymore because I know everybody is hiring the whole world is hiring but they're not connecting with the employees that want the job and it's so it's kind of sad because the employees like I'm here I'm here I'll work and they're like there's nobody here where I need people I need people and you're just like I'm here where are they I'm here where are they and it's somehow to get the two of you together I'm like oh I want to come and hit you in the head come on guys um, so if you haven't got a job yet definitely just start reaching out do not give up because they need you and you want to work and so um key is get your training if you haven't got your training they don't want to mess with you because they don't have time to train you they need you to come in and understand what needs to be done they expect us to train you and that's what we're here for so you want to get your fdi certified foil designer status get your credentials then get out there and let them know that you are ready. I got to find the right hole to put this in so that it doesn't fall down to the bottom. I want it to stay up. There we go. You don't even need any flowers for that. It's so fabulous, that bittersweet. I know. <laughs> I know the bittersweet is just like the perfect thing. I know. I've enjoyed it so much this autumn season at the house. And so I thought, well, I'll share it with you now because it is so great. Then just some pincushion protea to add in the focal emphasis. Yeah. I find um, it used to be you could learn on the job. They would hire you without training. And now they're so busy and they don't have the time to do that. And so it's vitally important that you make the effort to become a certified photo designer and then go out and get a job and it works. Yes, Marisa. Okay, so Nikki has a question for you and I think as well we should uh, let the Tula people answer this too. She wants you to pronounce the correct way on how to say 
protea, protea, however you guys all say it, because her 18-year-old daughter says she pronounces it wrong. You know, and that is an excellent question, and it's going to have multiple answers. So I'm going to tell you what I know about it, and then I would like everybody to kind of type in how you pronounce it, because it is different according to your regional dialect. Um, so there's not going to be a true right or wrong. I say protea more often than not. Protea is what a lot of people say. Protea is what I was taught by a couple from South Africa, and Protea is the national flower of South Africa, so I figured, well, since they're from South Africa, it's the national flower from South Africa, and they were selling Protea, I kind of felt like, well, they probably are saying it correctly. But for years and years and years, I was always taught Protea, and then the other that I've heard is Protea. I've never really used Protea, but Protea or Protea, and I personally go by Protea more often than not, but I also make mistakes and don't always do it. So um, that's a good question. So if you'd all type in how you say it, uh, and then where you're from, so that we know in Australia they say blah, 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 in Ireland, in Kentucky, um, so that we can see what your thoughts are. Now, as I'm finishing this up, a request I have for you is to share this out. Help us spread the word about Floral Design Institute. We are on the last six weeks of the year. It's kind of amazing. I'm just like, oh my gosh, we were working on the calendar and it's like, okay, we've got the rollout next week and we've got the tulip people and then it's time for the holiday stuff and we've got to get Thanksgiving done and it's like, oh my gosh. And then school starts again in January and I'm thinking 2022 is only six weeks away. Oh my goodness. And so when you start thinking like that, I was like, oh, how do we get all of these people graduated before the end of the year so that they're ready for the holidays and then they can work for Valentine's Day because I know that everybody's going to need employees so badly with Valentine's Day and then the weddings for 2022. It's going to be more weddings in 2022 than ever. They figure it's going to be more weddings than clear back in the 80s. That's the last time we had this flood of weddings. And so we need people. We need floral designers. And so I want to get as many people started in our online classes so that you can be ready to be working and you can start making people's dreams come true with flowers because we need you. It's really important. It's just kind of like, oh my gosh. So if you have not already gone to flower school, make this year your year. And so if you would help us out by sharing this, let people know that we are open for enrollment right now. We are accepting new students in the basic floral design course and in the advanced floral design course. And uh, the teachers are ready. They've been crazy busy, but they are set for new students now. And so it is the time. Bird of Paradise, these were left over from the advanced class last week. So Marisa, I tore your arrangement apart because I just thought they kind of went with this. So her arrangement no longer exists. Parker, what's going on over there? I have a great question from Grace. Uh, she says, how do you deal with feeling unqualified for work if the only hands-on learning you've had is FDI assignments? Or how, you know, how would you bridge that gap? Ah. So that's a good question. Once you've had your training, you become FDI certified. How do you build your confidence and what does that equate to as far as training and applicable to on the job? I find that if you have completed the basic and the advanced and you are FDI certified, owners give you credit for about a full year of working in a flower shop. Depending on your personal aptitude and how much practice you put into it, I have heard up to three years, but I think that's a little extreme. One to two is considered to be really normal for an FDI certified floral designer. So if they're looking for experience, if they say, I need somebody with a year experience, you qualify. If they say, I'm looking for five years experience, you do not qualify. So if you have become an FDI certified floral designer, 
I want you to practice. That's the main thing. So that you build your personal confidence, go through your house, look for different containers, make an arrangement, look at it from all sides, and then take it apart and do it again. And take it apart and do it again. Now I'm gonna sneak around because I wanna look at this on the other side of the table to make sure I'm putting this in the right spot. But I don't wanna flip it around on you because I don't wanna drag my bittersweet. So I'm just gonna come around and go, hi, I'm over here now. Um, and then I'm gonna sneak this in right there. There we go. I kinda like it coming down that way because it helps to draw the eye through. I didn't want it to come up because I don't want it to bring your eye away from the horizontal line. I was really in a long and low mode today for some reason. Horizontal was speaking to me. Maybe I need balance and stability in my life. They say if you design horizontally, it conveys stability and balance. So maybe that's what I was looking for today was balance and stability um, because I've just been flowing that way. So. Um, and also yeah. restfulness, so maybe that's why we've been going to bed at 7 o'clock. That's it! It's because we need restfulness. Oh my gosh, you know, that's true. Your designs do convey where your mood is. One thing, okay, we'll go back. Was it Grace that was asking about the employment? Yeah. Okay, so another thing, Grace, that I would tell you to help build your confidence and to each and every single one of you that is either A, looking for a job or trying to sell to a specific client. Maybe you already own a store and you just need more clients. You want to sell more flowers or maybe you're looking for a little different angle. Stand tall. I know that sounds silly, but if you stand tall, put your shoulders back. Really open your body up and be tall. If you took designing for competition with me uh, several years ago, we talked about being a tree. Be a tree. And if you're a tree, you're tall, you're strong, you're rooted, and you do well. And you know, all of our trees that tested that year, they all passed AIFD. So it has that validity to it. But if you're feeling not confident, Put your hands on your hips, put your shoulders back, stand tall, spread the legs out, and just put yourself into a power stance, become a tree, and when you believe it and do it, it will happen. You will be able to get that job, you will get that client, you will create that design that you're afraid of creating. All these little things that you can do, they're subtle, but they work because we're our worst enemies. Artists sabotage themselves many times just because we're a little bit nervous about something. And you really just have to believe in yourself and trust that the universe is going to take care of you. I was working on a new project just the other day and I sent a note to everybody on staff. I said, you need to put this out to the universe visualize this because we need to make this happen and you know what it worked because we all put it out to the universe we just stood tall we put our shoulders back we made a plan and it's going to happen it's pretty exciting so if you're a member of the um, tulip people you'll be the first to learn about it next week we'll be sharing it to you first you get the pre information and then the following week after thanksgiving we'll announce it to the rest of the world so if you're not a member of the tulip people already get that done because you're going to want to be part of the in the know group and it's going to be grand. So next week we don't have a live schedule. Next week is Thanksgiving week here in the United States. I know Canada already had their Thanksgiving and some of you don't have Thanksgiving in your countries but in the United States Thanksgiving is next Thursday and so we as the Tulip team are going to be closed on Thursday and Friday and we're actually closing early on Wednesday so we're not going to have a live stream at all. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday we're flowering our own homes. We are spending time with our friends and family and we're nurturing our souls, standing tall, getting big so that we can come back the following week 
and share with you again. Because if you don't take time to take care of yourself, then it just doesn't work. So uh, know that we're still thinking about you, but we're thinking about ourselves for a little while. What else is going on out there? We've got a few minutes. If you've got a last question that you want to ask, type it in there as quick as possible. And then um, my knife is not cutting that. I must need a clipper on that one. It's not quite. And I'm going to add a little more willow to this just because I think it will balance better. What have you got there? Uh, Bethany would like to know, or can you extend upon how freelancing works? I had some of that too, yeah. Freelancing is actually becoming more and more popular as people are wanting to take charge of their life and control their own schedules. They don't want that commitment to a full-time job that they have to be there from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. They want to know that Monday is the day I spend with my children, Tuesday is the day I do nothing but myself, Wednesday, nah, it's my open day. Thursday, Friday, I'll work for you. So then they only freelance for people who do events or weddings where they need help on Thursday or Friday. Or they'll say, I can work just Monday, Tuesday. So they find a flower shop that does a lot of corporate clients because Monday and Tuesday are big days for them then. Um, the biggest thing with being a freelance worker, the first two jobs are very difficult to get because you don't have any credibility but once you've had a couple jobs, the word gets out and it's easier. You might also contact your wholesaler because they know who's hiring and who's looking for extra help. And that works out really well. And then put it out to the universe. Tell everybody you know, guess what? I am available for freelance work. If you don't put it out, no one will know that and they're not going to hire you. Marisa. Um, is, do we have a past live that goes over pricing to figure out how much these designs cost. We do, um, because we don't talk pricing on all of our lives just because that could take up the whole hour. But we do have several lives and in fact this Friday I'll be posting it as a playlist um, because it, Susie put together a playlist that is all pricing and business and it's a compilation of our lives. So if you wanted to take the weekend or the holiday and just watch pricing after pricing after pricing, we go through so many different concepts and it's going to be posted on Friday. Susie, um, I know you're out there. Why don't you go ahead and make that playlist public? And then if anybody wants it, even before I post it on Friday, you can go to the YouTube channel Okay, if you're already there watching us live, you know where I'm talking about. Go to the YouTube channel, and in the playlist, it'll be a Flower School Business and Pricing Lives compilation. And Susie will be making that public, because sometimes we keep it so that it's only by um, invitation, so that it's for the P Tulip people first. And so I was going to open it up on Friday, but let's go ahead and just make it live. And so if you have questions about that, you can go and look at that right now. Um, you don't have to wait for us. You can um, just get in there and take a look. So now I'll put my arrangements out here so that you can see. It makes kind of a clustered mess, but what the heck. So I have two horizontal, one going this way, one going that way. Why that happened, I don't know. And then I do have the one vertical. All of them going through the same concepts that we teach in basic floral design and advanced floral design, just using different vessels, different flowers, different words. If you are thinking about becoming a florist, if you are thinking you want to work in a flower shop or freelance or open your own business, get started now because it's time. People are crazy for buying flowers. The rest of the year, they're forecasting to be huge, strong sales, more weddings next year, sales continued. We need employees, we need owners, 
We need entrepreneurs. We need all of this because we need to be able to provide flowers to all these customers. So if you're thinking about it, get started. We're ready for you. If you know somebody who should be doing this, who should be joining us, maybe you're an owner and you think, gee, this person would be a great employee. Share this out to them. Let them know because we're here. We'd love to have you all come join us. So now I'm going to have to say goodbye. We've hit our hour, but remember next week, we're not here. If you aren't a, group, a member of the Tulip people yet and you qualify, go ahead and request to be admitted into the group. And we'll take a look at that and admit anybody that is a Flower Lovers Club member or a student or a graduate. Be sure to answer the questions so that we know who you are, especially if your name is different on your um, social post than it is in our records. We can't find you. Then thank you to Susie and Caledonia for keeping up with me with all the links. I know I was throwing stuff out there at you. And thank you to Parker and Marisa for answering your questions by bringing them out to me so that we could talk about it. And thank you to you for joining us and sharing an hour of your life. I wish you all a wonderful rest of the week, a fabulous weekend, and I'll see you after Thanksgiving when we come back with a surprise announcement. Bye for now. Thank you.